bass, bangers and head bashers. Whether it's at a festival, club or house party, the impact of this subgenre has been felt by many. It is also one of the most effective ways to annoy your parents. But what exactly is it? My name is Redisi and today we are answering the most important question posed since the beginning of time. What the is dubstep? Dubstep was conceptualized in the early 2000s, dub being the word to describe the style of production and the word step taken from the phrase two step, which was used to identify the rhythmic interpretation of what was commonly heard in this particular subgenre. Notable artists of the time include Scream, Inga, and Mala. The supposed sound of dubstep stayed relatively consistent throughout its inception with the common presence of bass-driven compositions. However, things began to change in the 2010s when dubstep started to become more mainstream. Around this time, a top secret laboratory had just released information on one of their most successful scientific experiments. They had successfully combined three chemicals, heavy metal, Another was dubstep, and the final one, commercial success. The result? Skrillex. Even though Skrillex didn't necessarily pioneer this particular fusion of genres, he contributed greatly to the mainstream success of the dubstep genre overall. Dubstep began to decline in mainstream popularity and returned to the underground. However, the experimentation and fusion of genres continued producing delectable delights, such as rhythm, metal step, color base. Today, dubstep has a strong presence, especially in festivals such as Lost Lands, EDC, and Rampage. Some big names currently in the scene include Excision, Zomboy, and Subtronics. Like a lot of electronic dance music, an artist must be good at both the creation and execution of ideas. We will be analyzing a dubstep track. The tune we'll be analyzing is This Could Be Us. This could be everything we want. Featuring Frank Zummo by Virtual Riot and Mode Step. The song is meant to act as the conclusion to Virtual Riot's album Simulation. This. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to do it again. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize, but I can't sing at all. Had its own separate release as a single before the album came out. When approaching dubstep, we will look at the general characteristics and use this could be us as the key to help us understand more about the methods of production that makes dubstep dubstep. I'm not going to do this could be us again because we've already used that joke. Yeah. Let's go. Comedic value, dry jokes, fringiness. We, we have it all at Dataset. <laughs> Most dubstep songs have a tempo of 140 to 150 BPM. This one in particular is 150 BPM. By the way, BPM stands for beats per minute. Instrumentation in no particular order includes vocals, synthesizers, drums, and of course, bass. Now, we could say bass fits under the synthesizer category, but because it plays such a big part in the tune as a separate component, I will refer to it as its own thing. Starting off with the vocals, they begin 13 seconds into the track and are used as a way to draw the listener into one of the catchy melodic ideas first heard at 38 seconds. The vocals sit mostly in the mid-range of the frequency spectrum. They are crisp, clear, and take priority in the mix when they are being used. Reverb and delay are used to convey an alter the atmosphere of the vocals in relation to where they fit. Reverb is an effect used to create a sense of atmosphere and delay is like an echo oh, oh, effect. When looking at a general overview of the vocals, they are relatively simplistic in terms of ideas. However, one aspect that gathers the attention is the use of vocal chopping. This is where a vocal track is chopped up into smaller sections and rearranged to create a new melody. The lyrics are pretty Pretty straightforward, but plenty of effects, layering, and additional harmonies have been sprinkled in throughout. Dubstep songs don't tend to be driven only by vocals. Instead, they often play a part as a key feature 
in one or more sections, e.g. the intro or the verse. Synthesizers are often present in dubstep and EDM in general. Synthesizers are commonly perceived as electronic sounds and melodies that are produced from a keyboard. They help put the electronic in electronic dance music. This could be love. Presents a lot of its main melodic ideas and sound design through the use of this instrument. Some relate these sounds as to what can be heard in a Transformers movie. Well, as it turns out, Skrillex composed the sound design for Transformers Age of Extinction. A lot of the melodic synthesizers are used in the intro, verses, pre-choruses and breakdowns to provide support for the vocals. This is just one of the many impactful ways that synthesizers can be used in a dubstep tune. The possibilities are endless. Alright, everyone's favourite, we get to talk about bass. Bass is a key component of most dubstep tracks and provides the delightful sonic properties heard in the lower frequencies of a mix. Picture this, we're at a hugely populated festival. The dubstep track being played is approaching the chorus. The build-up is becoming more intense. The crowd's energy is increasing. Excitement is peaking. Everyone's on the verge of losing it. Here it comes. Three, two, one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, dis disappointment. What's going on? Why is there no bass? Dubstep with no bass is like a mainstream radio station playing songs with no vocals. There's just something missing. The bass in the chorus provides a solid impact due to the reserved use of it in the build-up. That results in the chorus hitting hard as the darker tone of the sound design and the bass used to reinforce it become the main components of the chorus's idea. Another big player in the realm of dubstep production is the drums. Dubstep without drums is literally like cheesecake without the cheese. Just cake. Just, just <laughs> cake. We're keeping it cheesy here at Dubstep. Dubstep drums tend to be heavy and impactful. They often work together with the bass to reinforce that perceived atmospheric component of power. The kick and the snare are two elements of the drums used in dubstep that people tend to pay attention to the most. That's because in order to get that two-step feel of a typical dubstep tune, you need two steps. It's kind of like a pattern, right? The kick is the call and the snare is the response. What? The use of dubstep drums often tend to be drawn from samples and not acoustic drums. Hey man, do you touch my drum set? Nope. A sample is a recorded piece of audio that typically is not owned by the artist. Using drum samples removes the necessity to set up an acoustic kit correctly for recording or the need to have an acoustic kit handy in the first place. Dubstep often has futuristic, high energy, robotic, slash electronic sounds present in its instrumentation. Hopefully, this has given you some insight into the world of dubstep and the general musical characteristics that make up the overwhelming bass synths and screaming sounds that we all know and love. Dubstep has definitely matured over the years since its conception and solidified its place in the world of EDM. It continues to evolve with the creative experimentation of genre fusions from other artists. Who knows what the future will hold, but one thing's for certain, dubstep is here to stay. What are your favourite dubstep tracks? What other components make a dubstep tune what it is? Where do you think the future of dubstep is headed? Let us know in the comments below. Follow me on all my social media platforms, they'll be on the screen, at Redacy Official. Links are also going to be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and catch you next time.